Hello beautiful souls and welcome to my channel, Rosology. This is the February energetic forecast for your sign Cancer and that applies to your sun, moon, and rising sign or maybe you're just cross-watching for someone else that you know but either way, welcome to my channel. Happy birthday to all of my Aquariuses as well out there. Now you can scroll down to the comments in the description for the timestamps to the meditation and to the reading if you are just ready to get straight to it because I do have a couple of things to explain before getting to this reading. The first being that I have a lot of cards that I've pulled for each sign in February because intuitively I feel like we all needed a really in-depth reading on what to expect energetically this month and how to navigate that energy. And after reading for all of the signs because I'm filming this intro video last, I'm hoping to have these um, videos uploaded on the 3rd of February. It is currently the 30th of January. So fingers crossed that I can get these up in that time frame. But after filming for all the signs, I can honestly say I believe that February, this Aquarius season, is one of the most tumultuous months of 2020. And not necessarily in a bad way, but it's definitely challenging us by shaking things up, by shaking up our core, shaking up our system, shaking up our day to day. And this is because of Saturn and Uranus, which are the two planets that rule Aquarius. So this is nothing to fear but definitely something to be aware of and prepared for and each sign's reading definitely delivered and gave an answer on how we can work with February's energy and use it to our benefit. A few dates to note or a couple dates to note is Mercury retrograde will be occurring this February 16th to March 9th but we will be entering into Mercury retrograde shadow zone from February 1st to March 29th so that is something to definitely take note of. I will also be doing a pick a card reading for how to work with this upcoming Mercury retrograde as well so you can be on the lookout for that on my channel and lastly I wanted to let you guys know that I'm not doing any personal readings right now I didn't take any readings in January either because I wanted to get back to making sure that I was uploading enough content free content up here on my YouTube channel since I sort of slacked off in December with December being um, you know the holidays and doing a whole bunch of personal readings I really slacked off on this YouTube content here but you guys will definitely be the first to know when I am back to accepting personal readings again um, but thank you guys for being patient with me. I truly do appreciate you. And if you do just want to reach out to me, you can always email me. My email address is linked in the description down below. So now let's get to this meditation. Let me just start off by saying, like I always do, that this is a collective reading for your sign. So in order for this reading to resonate with you, you need to be synced into the energy of this reading. To help you do that, I'll be offering a 30 second meditation. And if you are ready to begin that meditation, get into a nice relaxed position become aware of your entire body starting with your feet and working that awareness up in sections from the feet to the head then take a deep breath in through your nose for around five seconds hold that breath for three seconds then exhale out of your mouth for six to seven seconds then focus on asking yourself or your higher self or your guides what guidance it is that you need to hear for the month of february 2020 and how you can best navigate this energy once you do that we'll begin that meditation right now. Now that you're intuitively synced into the energy of this reading, let me take the time to thank your guides, my guides, our higher self, and amazing spirit itself for these messages today. Now let's check out what February has in store for you and your sign. All right, and Cancer, welcome to your reading. So we're going to be starting off with your tarot cards first before getting to this huge stack of oracle cards here. I'm not reading the cards in any particular order, just from left to right. Um, and I'm just going to be divining a overall general message from the cards. Let's just get started and see what we got going on here the very first card that we have is the strength card in reverse the queen of wands also in reverse the ace of swords also in reverse and the high priestess okay i'm gonna stop here Okay, so what I'm seeing so far, Cancer, is you're not going to really be feeling like yourself this month. You're going to be feeling a little weak, 
possibly, even depleted, um, unsure of yourself, mentally a little jumbled up or a little uh, mentally confused. Um, so be very careful listening or acting from your intuition in February. If you are feeling those types of energies, when we tap into our intuition, it doesn't mean that our intuition is always right. It doesn't mean that we are always tapping into our higher self when we tap into our intuition. We are the ones that has to dial or pick the channel that we pull our intuition from, that we channel our intuition from. So if we are feeling insecure, depleted, negative, anything like that, then the intuition that we are hearing is coming from possibly a low vibration place. So try to center yourself before listening um, to your own intuitive voice here represented by this high priestess. Okay. And with these low feelings, your intuition is going to be very, very active, but it may be active because you are feeling displaced, uncomfortable, or awkward. That's the feeling that I'm getting here. The strongest is, is just feeling awkward. Like you can't get your footing together or something like that. Definitely be very careful with pulling from your intuition if you are feeling sort of low vibrational, negative, uh, just a little bit awkward because a lot of people, you know, they'll say like, um, yeah, well, you know, my, my energy or I'm an empath, I'm a sensitive and I pick this up and I pick that up and it's like, yeah, you know, you probably did, but, but <laughs> what place are you channeling from? Because if you're channeling from a place of um, fear, like survivor's mentality, something like that, then what you're picking up can be a bit warped, right? Um, so anytime we have the ego involved and the ego can be a plethora of different things the ego can be represented by fear insecurities doubts shortcomings um things that we don't like about ourselves flaws it can be us feeling egotistical confident you know the ego is a lot it can be a lot of different things so you want to completely remove the ego anytime you're channeling from your own intuition from your higher self you want to really remove all parts of your ego, the scared parts, the fearful parts, the insecure parts, the happy parts, the confident parts, the sure parts. You want to remove all of it. That the way you can truly let in this uh, credible um, source of, of divinity, basically. Okay, so let's check out the rest of the oracle card or the tarot cards here. And we have, look at that. We have the Ten of Cups, the Two of Pentacles in reverse, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Page of Swords. So some of you feel like you have to decide what sort of happiness you get to have. That's what I'm picking up here uh, from this Ten of Cups down. Like it's either emotional fulfillment or it's your career. Either it's like your marriage or it's your friends. Either it's like your family or it's your own individuality. Either it's your like religion or it's your sanity. It's, it's like there's like this... Uh, it's like there's like this barrier here that you're seeing. I'm just trying to figure out why do you feel like you can't have both cancer? There's this biased sort of opinion that you've got here. You're not open to seeing that both of these scenarios being fulfilled in both of these um, in both of these ways is very possible for you. You're the one that's sort of telling yourself it isn't going to happen with this page of swords in reverse here. Knight of Pentacles, it may feel like this isn't happening um, or like you're not meeting the right people. It's like you feel unequipped is what I'm picking up from this knight of pentacles and this page of swords together it's like you're feeling unequipped like you don't have everything that you need in order to be able to make this a reality basically so like for example if you want a family you may be telling yourself i never meet the right people or i never meet the right men or women that want a commitment cancer my love that's why things are moving a bit slow here and that's because you keep telling yourself that this is so difficult or it's impossible or it's never gonna happen you can have it all cancer ten of cups the ten of cups is here the Ten of Cups is here to tell you that you can have it all, complete fulfillment. Um, and that's and that's all cancer wants is security, love, commitment. You may feel like you have to choose or juggle between having a family or being successful in your career, but you don't. Um, or there may be another juxtaposition, some sort of thing that you're kind of like, wrestling between like, can I have this and that? Can I have them both at the same time? Um, you know, it, it might be and it might be something along the lines where it's like, I wish I, I wish my partner could be my best friend or I wish my best friend could be like my romantic partner. It could be something like that as well, where it's like you're so, or like maybe it's like uh, I wish my job. I wish my job could be my my passion. I wish my job was me fulfilling my purpose, you know, or how do I make my purpose my job? It, it, it's some sort of thing you're wrestling with here that I'm seeing. And that is all cancers want is security, love, commitment. So you may feel like you have to choose or juggle between having a family or being successful in your career but you don't or it may feel like things are taking too long to get started you may be wondering or second guessing 
yourself in February and that's why I heard the word awkward because you want this to happen but you're losing hope or faith that this is a possibility for you. You're in this weird limbo space where it's like, do I keep dreaming or um, and planning for this or is it ever going to happen? You want signs, answers, you want to know so you can start building that nest or that home or at least preparing for the future basically. So you just, you really want to know that the way you kind of know how to move. So it's like this weird sort of awkward space that you're in right now where you're kind of like floating sort of trying to figure out what the next step is. That's what I'm getting here. I think that's why the, the word awkward came through so strong. Like you just, you're feeling awkward because you're, you're feeling like you're standing in two different places at once. That's what I'm picking up. And then look at <laughs> underneath the deck. We have the world card and the world card. She represents interconnectedness. She represents the collective, not just the world, but the solar system, not just the solar system, but the galaxy, not just the galaxy, but the universe, not just the universe, but all things. So she represents this interconnectedness between all things in existence. So the world card and in, in, in other words, cancer, the world card is coming through to show you or to tell you that yes, you can have it all. You can have everything. So basically you are the woman in the world card here that is in the middle, sort of like in the middle of your own galaxy, of your own universe, of your own solar system. And you are able to have all of these things. You're, th these things are able, these things are possible because of you. So basically you are the common denominator between these things. That's what the world card is trying to say. The world card is trying to say that you are the common denominator between these things. You are the common denominator between your job and your love life or your love life and your family or your friends and, um, you know, your, your own path or your purpose and your job. The world card is here to say that you are the reason that these things are connected. In other words, this is extremely possible for you to have all of these things because these things are only connected connected because of you so it's just it's up to so it's up to you basically to find a way to make all these things come together to find a way to make these things connect but don't tell yourself that it's impossible okay that's where you're sort of messing up here in February if you start to get down on yourself because you're losing that faith or that hope just remind yourself that this definitely can happen you are the world these things are connected because of you okay so just remember that and find peace with that okay definitely find peace with that we even have the high priestess here she's sitting between the light and the dark she's sitting between both worlds she is the reason that these worlds are connected again the, this family here and the ten of cups they are the reason that their worlds are connected that they have found this emotional fulfillment that they have found this place of belonging they have finally reached the culmination the end of their journey because this is a journey that they walked they would this journey would not have been complete without their without them in it without their decisions their actions and their choices and their movements basically so you are the reason that these things are connected so these things are very possible in your life cancer okay let's go ahead and check out you guys as oracle cards here to see what else it is that we're seeing for your February the very first thing that we have look at this you guys look at this is grand trine blessings and a grand trine a trine in astrology is when three points are made between three celestial bodies and it makes it forms a triangle and that trine um is a portal basically but um, what it is, is it sort of reminds me of the world card where it's like these things are connected. They're connected at these weird degrees and angles, but still all the same. They are connected. So these so you are able to use this portal. You are able to create this doorway almost to the life or the reality that you want. So grand trine blessings. This is saying this is like the world card right here. This is saying that blessings are coming in. And then we have look at this. Venus love okay so this is about your relationship for some of you and Venus is the ruler of Libra and uh, Taurus so you may even be dealing with a uh, Libra or a Taurus in your life you yourself may have some Libra or Taurus energy in your chart and that would be the second house in the seventh house so yeah Venus deals with love she deals with the things that are of value to us she deals with the things that um, make life beautiful and make life worth living basically she deals with the things that we own the things that we possess basically because these things are 
they sort of make up our identity in a way. So um, for sure, this could be talking about your relationship, but Venus sort of rules everything. Um, she kind of rules, so let's just say that a big house to you living in a really nice part of town is something that is really important to you. It's something that you really prioritize. That is ruled by Venus. That is what Venus is saying that would make you feel um, good, that would make you feel worthy, that would make you feel valuable, basically. So it's basically Venus love. I'm seeing this connected to the Ten of Cups. So what makes you feel of value? What makes you feel good? What is your idea of the Ten of Cups? It might not be a family. It might not be marriage and kids. That's not for everyone, right? So what is it for you? Is it that nice job? Is it that big house? Is it that nice car? Is it moving to a certain city? Is it living in a certain area? Is it working a certain sort of job or passion, having a certain hobby? You know, what is your Ten of Cups to you, basically? The next card that we have here is, look at this. 10th house the world and then we also have the world card here 10th house uh is ruled by capricorn as well as saturn so this is all about hard work hard work and i see that you are willing to put in the hard work you just don't know what to work at and you don't know what direction to go in that's what i'm seeing here um with this 10th house the world and this um, Knight of Pentacles, it's like you're waiting for your orders to come in. That's what I'm seeing with this Knight of Pentacles. It's like I'm waiting for my assignment. I'm waiting for my directions. I'm waiting for my instructions. I just don't know how to move. So there's a bit of awkwardness right now because you're really waiting to see what the next step is. So 10th house is all about that hard work legacy. Is It also has to do with the uh, Ten of Cups as well um, in a sense where it's like, you know, you're really working to build a legacy, to build something that not just you can enjoy, but your loved ones can enjoy and that your loved ones can live off of as well the next card that we have here is black moon lilith mystery the thing i'm getting with this card is lilith is a very she's a very interesting story i'm actually doing a pick a card on her pretty soon where we um and uh dissect your Lilith energy and Lilith is she was the first wife of Adam um yeah in the story of Adam and Eve <laughs> so Adam had a wife before Eve her name was Lilith but Lilith did not want to be subservient to Adam she saw herself as Adam's equal and because of that they butt heads a lot and Lilith decided to leave the Garden of Eden and to go off on her own to be independent um to be her own person because she did not want to be Adam's servant. She didn't want to be beneath him. She saw herself as his equal. And why shouldn't she be seen as his equal? You know, that's the way that she saw it. So uh, she ends up going off and sort of becoming this demon of the night, basically. Um, and so, yeah, you know, Black Moon Lilith represents a lot of different aspects. There's actually like three different sort of like Lilith uh, signs that you can kind of read. But the Black Moon Lilith sort of deals with her when she is rejected from the Garden of Eden when she is ostracized from the guard from this paradise right and so this represents us when we're rejected when we're angry when somebody has said no you're not good enough or I don't like the I don't like this about you so I'm not going to choose you so this is sort of like rejection so maybe you are dealing with somebody right now as well cancer that you're worried about getting being rejected by maybe you're worried about being rejected by a job a person a relationship something like that maybe you're worried about your lifestyle being rejected maybe you're worried about not being accepted in some way shape perform black moon lilith can also represent hidden enemies okay so there is a lot going on in this sort of uh unconscious i would say the unconscious when we see black moon lilith so really do a little bit of digging we also have the high priestess here so this is really all about discernment really digging into those deep parts of yourself and finding out what is it that makes you feel loved Venus is also here. What makes you feel loved? What makes you feel accepted? What makes you feel worthy? What makes you feel comfortable and safe? Like I said, that's what cancer is all about. Uh, security, um, comfort, stability, commitment. That's what you guys are all about. Consistency. And then the next card that we have here is neptune sacrifice yeah so are you are you sacrificing are you the one that's sacrificing in your relationships are you getting out of your relationships what you're giving to your relationships you know because to have this black moon lilith card and the neptune right after this is like yeah you may be the one that's sacrificing more um, than you're actually getting, or you may be the one that's taking too much and not giving enough. So really look at the balance in your relationships. Neptune also rules a sign of Pisces. So um, 
as well as Neptune deals with the 12th house. So yeah, again, this is the unconscious coming in. High priestess. This is like uh, the, the other side of life that we really don't spend a lot of time in unless you're somebody that is dominated by Neptune. So you could be something like a Pisces rising or Neptune could be in your first house or um, on your ascendant, something like that. Um, you could be dealing with somebody that has very strong Neptune vibes or is a Pisces or has a very strong 12th house vibes as well as you could have a lot of a lot going on in your 12th house. Okay, so and the next card that we have here is Mercury Mind. Okay, like I was saying, you're going to be feeling a little jumbled up in February, mentally jumbled up in February. Plus, we also have Mercury retrograde happening um, February 16th until March 9th. We have Mercury retrograde, and that can cause a little bit of mental fog, a little mental disruption, a little mental cloudiness, basically. Um, so that might be the mental sort of jumbled upness, <laughs> the mental confusion that I was seeing a little bit here. Um, but this is mostly coming in because you're just not going to be feeling like yourself. You're going to be feeling a little depleted in energy you're not going to be feeling as confident as upbeat as extroverted um and this is more than likely because we're in the season of aquarius aquarius is all about detachment you are a cancer cancer is all about attachment you know finding these connections to things through our emotions and so during this time this can be a little bit uh odd for for cancers who are used to connecting right we're getting ready to move into pisces season but this is actually a really great time for you guys to sort of do a little bit of exploring about what it is that you actually truly want and the, another message that i'm getting here is explore your unconscious explore those really deep hidden parts of your psyche because that might be the place um, that is holding your actual wants in life and that be and that may be another reason why you're feeling a little displaced or a little off in February because you're you may be trying to tell yourself you don't actually want a family maybe you just want to focus on your career but the reality of it may be no I do want a, a great career and a family or maybe I don't want a family and I'm trying to force myself to be in this committed relationship or I'm trying to force myself to be this family man or this family woman when in reality what I really want to be is a free spirit that's all about my career so really explore the deep hidden parts of your unconscious because there's something here that is dealing with rejection you feeling like you're not good enough you feeling like you don't fit in you feeling like you know what if if I show my true self I'm going to be ostracized or I'm going to be rejected from this paradise from this garden of Eden from society from um people in society accepting me because we have this black moon Lilith card here and then we have Neptune sacrifice and then Mercury mind saying that it's all in your mind the truth is is that you will be accepted plus we have a lot of blue and green going on and it looks like a little bit of indigo so this would be um this could be the third eye chakra the crown chakra as well as the heart chakra and the throat chakra so all the upper chakras from the heart to the throat to the third eye to the crown so um maybe really kind of focus on your those higher chakras yeah yeah i think you guys need to focus on your higher chakras because i think your lower chakras are really sort of activated right now and that might be why you're feeling a little disconnected because the the lower chakras they sort of disconnect us in a way. The higher chakras connect us to the, the external. The lower chakras connect us to the internal, to what's inside of us, basically. Okay, so um, yeah, really, really take a look at that. You might not be honest with yourself about what it is exactly that you want right now. And that may be what's causing a little bit of this... Um, sort of floating period this sort of like a period where you're just where you just feel like you're just floating just trying to figure it out and you're not able to make a move because you don't know in what direction to go like we need to know where we're going in order to know if we need to make a left turn a right turn keep straight or reverse right so um you know that's what i see you trying to do in february is really trying to figure out where am i going where's my life going where is this going where's this job going where's this relationship going where's this going basically i see you starting to get a lot more serious about i need to understand where this is going okay the next card that we have here is Jupiter abundance. Like I was saying, you can have it all cancer. Just like I was saying, you can definitely have it all Jupiter abundance. And then the next card is tea leaves foresight. So this for me feels like your dreams. Um, you're probably going to be getting a lot of messages, synchronicities, signs in February that will be trying to guide you in the high priestess is right here. Yeah. High Priestess is right here in the center of your tarot spread. So yeah, um, something's going to be trying to guide you, but you just have to be sort of open to it and um, not be so in your mind, not be too much in your head, okay? The next card that we have here is 
fire spontaneity okay so something may come along and kind of show you like you know what maybe this is what i really want and look at this we have like the same theme here it's like fiery red orangey this is the lower chakras so it's very interesting how the lower chakras are kind of coming up now and then we have here crystal ball clarity what i'm seeing with crystal ball clarity is one that things like readings astrology numerology uh pick a card readings tarot readings um uh, doing readings on yourself going and getting readings done is going to be very very helpful in the month of february find somebody that you guys really trust find somebody that you guys really enjoy listening to that that makes you feel better that makes you feel whole that's not going to charge you for every little thing but you know somebody that genuinely wants to help you figure these things out out. You know, try to find um, somebody that you can really trust or depend on that can read or interpret energy. Or maybe you need to get into reading and interpreting your own energy. That the way you can find some extra clarity. Because right now in the month of February, you're going to need to find something else to sort of lean on instead of your own mind when it comes to your mind. Because your mind's not going to be that dependable in the month of February. You're going to need to sort of rely on something else like energy readings, something like that. Astrology, numerology, tarot, divination, something along those lines. Dream interpretation interpretation dream work soul work anything like that the next card that we have here is perseverance i know that i can do whatever i set my mind to yes you can exactly whatever you set your mind to you can have it perseverance you can have this perseverance keeps coming up too for a few of the other signs the next card that we have is adversity i accept that challenges are the best way to learn yeah, so there are going to be a few challenges in February for you. I think most most of your challenges is going to come from you sort of trying to um, get your mind to cooperate, get your mind out of this like foggy place. I think that's where a lot of this awkwardness is going to be coming from because you're, cause you're just going to feel like you can't even mentally connect with your own self is what I'm getting here. And then the next card that we have is peace. I am a being of love and I release all negative energy. That's exactly what you need to focus on in the month of um, February is peace. Really finding this peaceful place, finding this peaceful acceptance of, you know what, this is what I want. Maybe I wasn't being honest with myself and you're going to find a lot of peace when you actually tap into what it is that you truly want because like I said a lot of this awkwardness is coming from you not knowing what you want and because you don't know what you want you can't necessarily make a move you can't necessarily progress or step forward because you don't know in which direction to move so once you sort of figure out you come to this clarity um, there's a lot of peace that's going to come with that where it's like okay now I know exactly what I want now I can move forward instead of standing still like this knight of pentacles okay and then the next card that we have look at that Loneliness. I know that I'm never alone. So you may be feeling a bit isolated, uh, a bit isolated, a bit lonely in the month of February. You may feel like nobody gets it. Nobody understands what you're going through. People do if you give them a chance. Try to give some people in your life a chance to um, be there for you this month of February, okay? The next card that we have here is fire. And it says reckless actions lead to conflict. Okay, so don't don't move out of impulse, Cancer. I know you really want to sort of get the ball rolling, but don't move out of impulse because this could lead to more issues down the line. Um, you know, because right now you're supposed to take this time to get still in February. February is going to make you slow down because February is making you gain some clarity. That's exactly what's happening. And that's what happens when we are in the season of Aquarius, which is a beautiful season because Aquarius helps us to detach so that the way we can enter into this third person perspective that third person point of view i can actually leave the link down below to the video that i did on the aquarius season the aquarius new moon where i did a reading for all the signs and i talked very extensively about the energy of aquarius because aquarius is it's a beautiful energy it helps us to detach it's the energy that we really need to be able to break away from very heavy things and things that have a hold on us and this can also help us to figure out who we truly are and what we truly want because we're detached from that emotional need to fit in like i was saying with this black moon lilith you're a little you, you may be a little bit worried about rejection not fitting in if if i'm my true self i may be ostracized or rejected people may not love me in the way that i need them to or the way that they do right now if i choose to go my own way okay the next card that we have here is winds of change your surroundings will undergo transition okay so yeah exactly things are changing you just have to stay um 
you just have to keep the faith and knowing that things are going to change okay so it says your surroundings will undergo transition like i was saying in the tarot cards you're feeling like things aren't really changing or moving right now because you really don't know where to move but things are going to start changing very soon or transitioning for you very soon but right now you need to take this time to sort of be still and figure out what you want that's what february is urging you to do and it may be a bit difficult but just trust in it right now the next three cards that i pulled are from the romance oracle just to get a nice uh, love reading on your romantic relationships and the very first card that we have from the romance oracles for giving and learning as you release and heal the past you experience more love in your present moments yeah so just like lilith lilith she was really pissed off after she was rejected uh from the garden of eden because she didn't want to be subservient so you know it, it's this is something that you need to forgive and learn from whatever it is that you feel you may have been rejected from or you may have been ostracized from you need to really learn how to forgive that that the way you can move on and totally accept peace and new love and fulfillment in your life the next card that we have here is separation time apart from your partner is on the horizon so that may be what some of you are dealing with and that may be why this black moon lilith card came up you're feeling rejected you're feeling you're feeling ostracized from your own relationship you're not feeling accepted by your own partner like how Lilith felt when Adam rejected her when Adam said no you're not good enough because you you can't you don't want to serve me so that may be what some of you are really dealing with right now here and then we have the Venus card of love here so yeah it may be something going on with your relationship where, where you're sort of facing a separation right now the next card that we have here is beautiful love yourself first your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive yeah so like I was saying you're going to be feeling a little awkward you're not going to be feeling very sure of yourself not as as confident as normal um and this is because you're learning how to love yourself you're learning how to love all aspects of yourself you're learning how to love yourself on the days where you're feeling insecure we don't wake up every single day feeling confident feeling ready to take on the world feeling ready for action and you know we don't wake up every day feeling like that so february is coming here to teach you how to slow down and how to love yourself even when you aren't feeling like you're on top of the world even when you're not feeling amazing so that's basically what february is coming in to teach you Teach, is teaching you how to love every aspect of yourself like Lilith Lilith had to um I don't I don't know if Lilith ever really honestly learned how to love that rebellious part of herself you know uh, we really don't know what happened to Lilith after she left the Garden of Eden besides the fact that she became the mother of demons so you know she really had to um she took on a very heavy sentence because of the fact that she didn't want to fall in line basically so this is really about loving yourself first understanding that at the end of the day in order for you to find this you have to already be operating on this where you love your where you are feeling fulfilled enough with or without these things in your life basically so that's what february is coming to teach my cancers these next three cards are from um an oracle deck that has to deal with health because i wanted to pull some cards to see what we should focus on health wise for the month of february and the first card that we have is look at that unconditional joy dear archangel Raphael, thank you for helping me appreciate everything that makes me happy right now this sounds a lot like uh the ten of cups right here yeah the next card that we have here is expect a miracle dear god and archangel Raphael, thank you for your miraculous intervention and healing energy which has restored the health of name of person so that's beautiful expect a miracle to show you that you can have all of these things you don't have to pick and choose if you don't want to you do not have to pick and choose like lilith had to lilith had to pick am i going to stay in the garden of eden and be you know this this a part of the collective or am i going to go off and be an individual you are not faced with that decision cancer you don't have to make that really difficult decision you are allowed to have it all you just have to realize that you are worthy of that you're capable of that and you are able to have that that is actually an option for you you just have to see it as an option and then the next card that we have here is easy does it dear archangel Raphael, please help me detach retreat and let go so that healing can occur like i was talking about we are in the season of aquarius this is all about detaching um retreating as well as it says here and the last three cards that we have is i don't know exactly what this is so now i'm actually going to have to get the book to read this uh but we have we have anima mundi don't even know what that is <laughs> we have the stone to me this looks like stubbornness the stone it looks like something where it's like not budging not moving um and to me again that's coming through as you don't have to choose you do not have to choose you might feel like you have to but you don't have to you can be stubborn and hold on to what it is that you actually see your life being you don't have to pick and choose and then we have here the vessel 
Okay. And that kind of reminds me of what I was talking about earlier in your, in your tarot reading, which is like, make sure that you are channeling, um, make sure that your vessel is clear that the way you are actually channeling from your higher self and not your lower self. Okay. So let me grab the book really quick. Read, um, read what this card is about because I have no clue and I don't want to miss a message here. So give me a second. Okay, so Anima Mundi epitomizes the principle, accept all, reject none. You guys, oh my God. It says, simply put it as a living soul of the world and all of its multifaceted, multidimensional layers bonded together, bonded together like the world card here, like I was talking about, bonded together by loving cosmic forces. Diversity is celebrated. Multiplicity is honored and nothing is denied embrace. Like I was saying, Black Moon Lilith, you're not going to have to make a decision like Lilith. You are accepted. Every part of you is accepted. You need to accept every part of yourself. Okay, I'm going to continue on with this uh, paragraph here. Constructs of separation dissipate into the wonderful mess of shared consciousness. Animal Mundi is the link between the literal and the imaginal the rational and the mythic it is the connective fiber that makes life meaningful like the venus card that i was talking about here this card indicates an initiation on the level of the soul you will awaken the unique light within and witness how this light contributes to the radiance of the entire universe you will sense yourself as a critical note in the cosmic orchestra. Destiny is altered as you hear the enchanted melody of all living things. When light, tending to the sacred details of life, when it's dark, overwhelmed by the bigness of existence. To go deeper, alchemical drawings of Anima Mundi, the life and paintings of Hilma F. Clint. I'm not sure who or what that is. It says Anima Mundi is the energy behind the world card in the tarot deck. Both carry themes of universal unity, completeness, and embrace. Wow. <laughs> beautiful way to wrap up you guys' reading so the world card came through extremely strong and you guys is reading cancer so this was beautiful this is just to say and to show again that you are completely acceptable you are completely lovable every single facet and aspect and part of you is completely acceptable and lovable you just have to stop seeing yourself as it's either this or that no it's all you can have it all you are the entire package so don't split yourself up like that because you are an entire package but this is all that I'm seeing from my cancers thank you guys so very much for tuning in i pray that this reading brought you guys some love support clarity and strength i want to take this time to thank your beautiful guides my beautiful guides our higher self and amazing spirit itself for these messages today hopefully you all come back to visit me sometime soon but until next time you guys stay safe stay blessed please keep conquering the world and i'll be back next time all right bye guys